99% of developers don't get seg faults. On June 4, 1996, the Ariane 5 rocket launched from French Guiana in what was meant to be a triumphant leap forward for the European Space Agency. Just 37 seconds into flight, it suddenly veered 90 degrees off course, a violent impossible turn. Less than two seconds later, at an altitude of just four kilometers, the aerodynamic forces were too much. The boosters ripped away from the main stage. The self-destruct mechanism triggered automatically. In an instant, the rocket and its $370 million payload were consumed in a gigantic fireball of liquid hydrogen. This explosion didn't just destroy the rocket, it delayed critical scientific research into Earth's magnetosphere for years. An investigation revealed no hardware malfunction, just a subtle software error buried in the system. One of the most expensive software failures in history caused by a single bug that could be hiding in your own code right now. In this video, we will expose the fatal bug that turned a pinnacle of engineering into a pillar of smoke, how it works, why it's so dangerous, and why even seasoned engineers fear it. I will reveal how that same deadly logic could be lurking in your own Vibe coded database. Wait until the end of the video to find out what really caused this fatal disaster turning modern Marvel into a cautionary tale. As always, we have to start with a core definition. A segmentation fault, commonly known as a seg fault, is a type of memory access violation that occurs when a program attempts to read from or write to a memory location that it doesn't have permission to access. It's one of the most common and critical errors in low-level programming languages like C and C++, where memory management is explicit and manual. Seg faults are usually fatal errors. The operating system terminates the offending process to protect system integrity, as continuing execution could corrupt data or create security vulnerabilities. To understand segmentation faults deeply, you first need a solid grasp of how memory is organized in a typical process. In modern operating systems, each program runs its own isolated virtual memory space, which is divided into segments like the stack, heap, code, text, and data segments. Each of these has specific access permissions. For instance, the code segment is typically read-only and executable, while the stack and heap are readable and writable. If a program tries to access a region outside its allocated memory or violates the permissions, like writing to a read-only area, a segmentation fault is triggered. The most frequent cause of segmentation faults is dereferencing invalid pointers. This includes null pointers, which are pointers that point to address zero, uninitialized pointers, which may contain garbage values, or dangling pointers, which are pointers that used to point to valid memory but are now invalid, often because the memory was freed. When the CPU attempts to resolve an address from such a pointer, the Memory Management Unit, or MMU, detects an illegal access and raises a fault. Another common scenario is buffer overflows. Arrays in C or C++ do not have automatic bounds checking, so accessing an index beyond the size of the array can corrupt adjacent memory. If that adjacent memory belongs to a different segment or is unmapped, the access will result in a seg fault. Even if it doesn't seg fault, it's still undefined behavior and dangerous, which is why buffer overflows are a well-known source of security vulnerabilities. Use after free errors are another major source of segmentation faults. When dynamically allocated memory, via malloc, calloc, or new is deallocated using free or delete, the pointer still holds the address of the now invalid memory. Using this pointer to access memory is a classic mistake. Seg faults can also happen with stack overflows, which usually occur due to infinite recursion or allocating excessively large local variables. The stack is a finite region, typically 4 kilobytes, and overflowing it means the function call stack has grown beyond the memory allocated for it, leading to invalid memory access. Less commonly, segmentation faults can arise from writing to string literals. In C, string literals are stored in read-only memory, so modifying them leads to a crash. Under the hood, when a program accesses memory, the hardware translates the virtual address to a physical one using page tables. Each memory page has associated permission bits, readable, writable, executable, etc. When a program violates these constraints, the hardware raises a page fault. If the page is simply not loaded into memory, for example for demand paging, the OS may handle the fault transparently. But if the access is illegal, for example writing to a non-writable page, the OS raises a segmentation fault, typically SIGSEG V on Unix-like systems and terminates the process. If you are interested in taking your software engineering skills to the next level, I would encourage you to build projects. I'm not talking about going down the rabbit hole of tutorial hell and building a to-do list, calculator, or weather app. I'm talking about building complex, real-world projects beyond
beyond the basics. This will certainly help you stand out in the competitive 2025 job market. This is where CodeCrafters comes in. This platform provides interactive tools to build developer tooling from scratch. There are a number of courses that teach building Git from scratch, building an in-memory Redis database, an HTTP web server, your own Docker, your own DNS server, and many, many others. I personally love that there's built-in support for over 20 different languages. My favorite, of course, is Go, but I would highly recommend trying a newer language like Zig as well. I'm excited to announce that I'm partnering with CodeCrafters to offer all my viewers 40% off. For more details, you can find a link in the description down below as well as the pinned comment. Now back to the video. Debugging segmentation faults requires inspecting the program's memory access patterns. A very common tool for this is the GDB or GNU debugger. Running a program inside GDB allows you to inspect the stack trace, memory values, and code context when the seg fault occurs. For example, after a crash, typing BT in GDB will show the call stack, indicating which function was executing and what line caused the problem. Valgrind is another powerful tool for detecting memory errors. It runs your program in a special instrumentation environment and flags memory misuses like invalid reads or writes, use after free, memory leaks, etc. It's slower than native execution, but invaluable for diagnosing complex bugs. Modern compilers like Clang and GCC also support Address Sanitizer or ASAN. It's a fast memory error detector that instruments your code during compilation. It can detect out of bounds accesses and use after free issues with relatively low overhead, making it suitable even during development. One more important nuance is that segmentation faults are not catchable in standard C or C++ code. Unlike exceptions in languages like Python or Java, a seg fault usually cannot be handled gracefully. However, in POSIX systems, you can install a signal handler for SIGSEGV. But this is an advanced topic and generally not recommended for beginners. It's mostly used in sandboxing or low-level system tools. Finally, it's worth noting that segmentation faults are a symptom, not a root cause. Fixing them involves identifying the underlying bug in logic or memory handling. Safe programming practices such as initializing pointers, checking for null, using memory-safe abstractions like std vector or std unique pointer in C++, and incorporating bounds checking can dramatically reduce the chance of encountering segmentation faults. So what really caused the Ariane 5 to fail so horribly? The Ariane 5 disaster was caused by a software error in the inertial reference system which determines the rocket's orientation, whether it's pointing up, down, or off course. The system tracked horizontal velocity using a 64-bit floating point number, then attempted to convert it into a 16-bit signed integer. And a 16-bit signed integer can only represent values between minus 32,768 and positive 32,767. This code was reused from the Ariane 4, which had much lower horizontal acceleration. In the Ariane 5, the velocity quickly exceeded what a 16-bit integer could hold. Just 37 seconds after launch, the conversion failed, but instead of handling the overflow safely, the processor inserted a diagnostic error code into a critical variable, the rocket's horizontal bias. The guidance system mistook this error code for real data and tried to correct the rocket's orientation. It violently tilted 90 degrees, aerodynamic forces tore it apart, and the self-destruct mechanism triggered automatically. The result was the total loss of the rocket and its $370 million payload. A single unchecked data conversion from 64-bit float to 16-bit int brought down one of the most ambitious space missions in history. And that kind of bug could be sitting in your code right now. So now is quiz time. Have you been actually paying attention to the coding gopher? How can stack overflow cause seg faults? The stack is a region of memory where a program stores local variables and function call information. It has a fixed finite size, and a stack overflow happens when this limit is exceeded. This is most commonly caused by excessively deep recursion where a function calls itself too many times without a proper base case. Each call adds a new stack frame to the stack. It can also be caused by declaring a very large local variable, for example, int big array 10 million inside a function. Why does this seg fault? When the program tries to add another stack frame beyond the allocated stack boundary, it attempts to write to a memory page it doesn't own. The memory management unit of the CPU detects this illegal access and signals the OS, which terminates the program with a seg fault. Okay, so you've been kind of paying attention. Sure, then tell me how does a buffer overflow cause a seg fault? A buffer overflow occurs when a program writes data beyond the boundaries of a fixed length buffer, like an array. This can happen on either the stack or the heap. When you overflow a buffer on the stack, you can overwrite adjacent memory. This could corrupt other local variables or more critically, the return address of the current function. When the function attempts to return, it pops this corrupted address off the stack and tries to jump to it. If this address is invalid or points to a non-executable memory region, you get an immediate seg fault. This is a classic security vulnerability. The heap is where dynamically allocated memory, for example malloc or new, resides. Overflowing a buffer on the heap can corrupt the metadata that the memory allocator uses to manage memory blocks. This might not cause an immediate crash, but the seg fault often occurs much later when the program calls malloc or free again, and the allocator tries to interpret the corrupted metadata. 
It can also overwrite adjacent dynamically allocated objects, leading to a crash when that object is later accessed. You've been following along pretty well, so let me test you about dangling pointers or use after free. This is a very common and tricky bug. A dangling pointer is a pointer that continues to point to a memory location that has already been deallocated or freed. The cause is that you call free p on a pointer p, but don't set p to null. Later, your code mistakenly tries to access the memory through p again. And why does it segfault? After memory is freed, the OS is at liberty to reclaim it for other purposes. When you try to use the dangling pointer, you might be accessing memory that now belongs to another part of the program or to the OS itself. And this, of course, leads to undefined behavior. It culminates in a segfault when you try to read from or write to a memory page you no longer have permission to access. So how well did you actually perform on that quiz? There's one more question that I didn't get to ask about illegal memory permissions, and writing to a read-only memory segment, for example string literals in C or C++ are read-only data. And you should probably not modify it if you don't want to encounter a segfault. If you learned something new in this video, consider leaving this video a like and subscribing for more future content like this. As always, thank you very much for watching, and if you want to take some baby steps towards becoming a 10x developer, I would highly recommend you check out Codecrafters in the pinned comment below. As always, thank you very much for watching this video, and happy coding!